In the next few lessons, we will be studying thin lenses. We will start with a lens like this one. And I'm going to put it over here. This is the principal axis of the lens. And I'm going to shine a paraxial ray into the lens. As you can see, this ray bends, gets bent towards the center and uh, goes through this point right here. And I'm going to shine another ray that is uh, also a paraxial ray. And this one also gets bent towards the center through that point. Okay. The reason why a lens like this bends the paraxial rays towards the center is because of refraction. This light ray goes through two refractions. You have refraction when the light ray goes from air into, say, glass, and then from glass into air. When it goes from air into glass, the light ray slows down. Therefore, the angle should get smaller. Here I drew this uh, normal line to help us see the angle better. The, this is the angle of incidence. It's faster in air, so the angle of incidence is bigger than the angle of refraction over here. And then it goes from glass into air, and the light ray picks up speed, so the angle out here is bigger than the angle in here. That's why this light ray would bend down this way, and then down this way again, and therefore it gets bent towards the center. A lens like this converges light, so this kind of lens is called a converging lens. Because both of these paraxial rays meet right here, this is the focal point of this converging lens. A converging lens does not have to be shaped like this. It can also be shaped like this or like this. As long as it is thicker in the middle, it is a converging lens. Here I have a converging lens and an object in front of the lens. And we're going to find the image produced by this lens. I have labeled the focal points and the two F points on both sides of the lens. First, we're going to use ray tracing to find the image produced by this lens. To use ray tracing, again, we need to draw two rays. The first ray I'm going to draw is a paraxial ray. So the ray goes uh, from the tip of the arrow parallel to the principal axis. For a real lens, uh, the light ray should bend twice because there are two refractions. But to make it simpler, when we draw the ray tracing, I'm just going to make the ray bend at the middle right here. Instead of having it bend twice, I'm just going to have the ray bend once. So I have this ray getting to the middle of the lens and then bend. Where do you think this ray is going to go to? This ray is going to bend and goes to the focal point. So this ray will go that way through the, bo through the focal point. And then the next ray I'm going to draw will be a ray that goes to the center of the lens. This ray going to the center of the lens how do you think this ray is going to continue? Near the center the two surfaces over here are kind of uh, parallel to each other. So it is like this ray is going through a rectangular block of uh, glass, which means that the ray is going to come out continuing on in the same direction. Although, when it goes through a thick piece of glass, the ray is going to shift a little bit. That's why we need the lenses to be thin so we can ignore that shift, which means that we're just going to ignore the thickness of the lens and uh, make this ray go straight without any shift. So if I make this ray continue on, it will keep going and uh, meet the other ray over here. And that's where the image is formed. Because 
this will be the image of the tip of the arrow so I'm going to get, draw the image right here it's inverted and it is formed by real light rays getting there so this must be a real image and it is uh, inverted now let's compare this ray tracing diagram to the ray tracing diagram we did in the lesson 13 in lesson 13 we had a concave mirror and the object is right in the middle between F and the 2F and here the object is also right between F and 2F the difference is that a mirror reflects the light so the light rays get reflected but a, a lens lets light go through which means that that's the only difference between these two the light rays instead of going through to the other side the light rays reflect now I have these two diagrams uh, one above the other so we can really compare these two in both diagrams the object is uh, the same distance in front of the mirror and the lens the rays coming in are the same for both the mirror reflects the light so the light rays would come down this way but the lens lets light go through so the light rays will go through this way now if I fold these two rays over here as if they are reflected then it will look exactly like this if I let these light rays go through and fold them over this side it will look exactly like this one so a concave mirror and a converging lens they form exactly the same kind of images it's just that a mirror reflects light so when the when a mirror forms a real image the real image is in front of the mirror and a, a lens lets light go through so when the lens forms a real image the real image is on the other side of the lens but in terms of the image distance it is going to be exactly the same the size of the image will be the same and it's going to the real image will still be inverted just like that one this means uh, the same mirror equation the 1 over do plus 1 over di equals to 1 over f is exactly the same for lens problems so this is called the mirror lens equation and the magnification which is the HI over HO it is also the same negative DI over DO so we use these same two equations for spherical mirror problems and the thin lens problems because a converging lens focuses light converges light so it has a positive focal length if I say the focal length for this lens is uh, 10 centimeters and the object is uh, at a DO that is uh, 15 centimeters and we want to find the DI we can use the same equation 1 over DO 15 plus 1 over DI equals to 1 over F 1 over 10 and this will give us uh, DI that is uh, 30 centimeters so the image is formed at three times the focal length away 30 centimeters and if I want the magnification it would be that negative di over do negative di is 30 do is 15 so we get a magnification that is a negative 2 the negative means it is a inverted image and the 2 means uh, the image size is twice that of the object another thing is that because light rays are retraceable if this is the object in front of the lens light rays will follow these paths and uh, form an image over there then if the object is there light rays will follow the same path but backwards and form an image over here if the object is here the image will be there if the object is there the image will be here that's why the DO and the DI are interchangeable in the mirror and lens equation but of course this is only true for real images when both DO and the DI are positive 
because only real light rays are retraceable. Light ray extensions for virtual images are not retraceable. So everything we talked about for concave mirrors can be used for converging lens. All these image properties apply to the converging lenses.